small town And I live in a small town All right, dude, we're rolling, you ready? Hey, Kensington, it's Tyler here with Lessons from the Lake. I'm super pumped to be with you guys. I'm what you call an extreme influencer. They brought me in because this summer is a big deal at Kensington. We got a lot of information for you guys, and they told me they need you to get the info. They need you to lock it in, keep it in the vault this summer. So what I wanna do for you guys, to let the team know we got everyone here right now hidden behind this camera, they didn't believe that I was gonna get the point across. They didn't believe that I could make this summer great for you guys. I went all in. I went all in with lessons up from the lake. Uh, dude. What? I, I don't think that says lessons from the lake. Yeah, it does. No. I, I told the guy. No, I, <laughs> dude. Dude, that says, I think that says lesions from the lake. All right. I mean, I'm sure it's fine, right? No, are you sh Yeah. What? Yeah, that's, that's missing an S. My wife is going to kill me. <laughs> It'll be fine. It, I mean, you can barely tell. No. No, it's not good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Glad you're here. We're going to hear more from Tyler this summer. 
I was thinking about, I should have thought of this sooner, but I think we, we should have had uh, those tattoos available for you in the lobby after the service. But hey, it's going to be great. We are, we're kicking off a new series uh, today called Lessons from the Lake. We find that Jesus and those he taught, a lot of times his ministries um, revolved around the water. And so um, that's where we're going we're gonna to look at the life of Jesus and, and how he taught others. And so it's just going to be a great series. It's going to take us all the way through the summer. Well, hey, we are uh, got a few things going on that I want to let you know about. First thing is uh, we've got a VBS, a Vacation Bible School. Uh, we haven't hosted one in a while, and we're really excited about it. But that's going to happen July 29th, August, uh, through the 1st of August, 6 to 8 p.m. So if you've got kids, um, kindergarten to fifth grade in your life, we would love for you uh, to bring them here. We want to fill this place up. It's going to be a great week together, so I'll just put that on your calendars the end of July there. Um, second, we have a new women's Bible study kicking off this summer, too. It's actually, um, they're meeting Monday nights at 7 p.m., and so if you are new or newer to this place, or if you're just looking for an opportunity to grow in relationship with other women, um, dive into the Bible together, that's going to be a great opportunity for you. Uh, Krista McGee, you see her email on the screen there, so if you, we'll leave it up for a second so you can take a snap with your phone or we'll have her information in the lobby for you as well. But she's leading that Bible study. I think they're jumping into the book of Colossians. Um, and so the location of it changes too, so, so reach out to Krista and um, jump in there. So like I said, we are um, diving into a new series, and we're actually going to hear from Brian Mowry. So he's speaking at our Troy location this morning, but we're going to um, see him on the screen. Uh, and actually, we're going to see Brian in person next week, so be sure to come back for that. But hey, before we jump into the rest of the day, why don't you stand up, give a high five or handshake to those around you, and uh, we're glad you're here. Hey, good morning, everyone. Hey, it's good to see you all today. Hey, I wanted to congratulate you all. You made it through another Cherry Festival. Yay! <laughs> or is it still going on today? Or is yesterday the last day? I think fireworks mean la the last day, right? So, cool. Anybody go to the parade yesterday? Yeah. That was fun. Cool. Well, um, yeah, we're kicking off a new series, Lessons on the Lake. And uh, one of this, uh, we're going to open with some singing. So go ahead and stand with me. Um, we're going to sing. I picked a song uh, that goes along with the scripture that Brian's going to be talking about in his message today. It's in Matthew 4. And it talks about how Jesus teaches us. He's going to teach us to be fishers of people. Have you heard that passage? And he asked you to come follow me and I will teach you to be fishers of people. And they stepped out onto the lake. And so that made me think of this song. It's called Follow You Anywhere. And it's just about how, yeah, we're going to trust what Jesus has to say. And then we're also going to sing after that the song we introduced last week, Spirit Lead Me, where things like may not seem clear to us, but we know that Jesus has our backs and is going to guide us and he's going to lead us through those moments. So let's open in this time of worship. Uh, sing this with me. <clears throat> Jesus, all I want is you. 
Jesus, all I want is you. Sing that with me. Wherever you need me, wherever it costs me, all I want. So all I want is you, Jesus, all. You're all that I want 
you say release I'm letting go if you're in it with me I'll begin and when you say to jump I'm diving in if you say be still then I will wait if you say to trust I will obey you're the only truth the life the way I'm done chasing me see the beauty in all of us and we realize that even when things don't make sense and we don't really know what's going on that you've got our backs and you've got a plan for all of us and you're going to lead us if we just choose to follow you lord we love you in your name we pray this amen all right go ahead and have a seat and turn your focuses to the side screens we've got a, a message from brian mowry today if all the tech stuff works right. Let's see, here we go. Well, good morning, everybody. All right. My name is, is Brian, and it's just a privilege to be able to share a message with you today. And this is one of those times where this message is going to all of our campuses at Kensington. And so I have the just honor to be able to greet those of you who are in Traverse City. Hello, Traverse City. Beck and I are going to be up there next weekend. We're looking forward to that. We schedule ourselves to be up there in the summer pretty often. You're going to see a lot of us up there. But uh, Traverse City, greetings to you. Those of you in Clarkston, in Orion, in Birmingham, in Clinton Township, and here in Troy, in our Brazilian campus as well. Greetings to all of you. I think I, I think I got them all, but it is just a joy to be able to share with you today. Um, next week marks a really important moment in the Maori family. I don't know if you've been keeping track of this or not, but we moved one year ago about one week from now. One year we've been here. Isn't that amazing? Like, I can't even believe that year's gone by that fast. So much has happened. And I just wanted to pause in this moment across all of our campuses and just say thank you. Thank you from, from the Maori family. You have welcomed us so well. You've loved us. Your, your notes, your kind comments, um, just all the things that you've done to make us feel at home here has been amazing. So thank you. Thank you so much. Our family's doing well. Our girls are doing well. We're sending one of our girls off to college soon. I can't believe it. Uh, things are happening fast. Um, but we're just so thankful to be a part of this family called Kensington. You know, there are a lot of things that I love about our family here at Kensington. And uh, as I've been here a year now, there have been a few things that I've observed. And, and there's so many things that I love. And probably the thing I love the most is that we love Jesus. This is a church that loves Jesus. This is a church that doesn't get too caught up on disagreeing and arguing about the things that are on the fringes. We find our center in Jesus Christ, and I love that about us. I also love that we know we're not perfect. You know that, right? <laughs> you do know that. I love that. There, there's this sense here when I came to Kensington that it's like there's this authenticity that I believe started with the founders of this church, of like, listen, we are not perfect people, and we know it. And therefore, if you're here for the first time, like, we're so glad you're here. You, you don't have to get all cleaned up, all perfected before coming to church. Come as you are. I love that about Kensington Church. I also love that we're about the one. And really, we exist for the one. First and foremost, the one, God, we exist for him, but we exist and we live and our mission is to reach the one, that person who is far from Jesus. That was all of us. We wanna reach people who are 
living a life far from the Lord. We want to reach people who don't know that they're valued by God. We want to reach people who are hurt and broken. We want every single person on this planet to know that God loves them and has a place for them. And I love that about Kensington Church. We're getting to know Michigan in this year, and one of the things that we love is we love the lake. We love going to the lake. Some of you are at the lake right now, and we're jealous of you for that. But it's wonderful. We, 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 love, we love the lake. You know, one of the things that if you were to come to my house that you would see all throughout my house are these wood signs with sayings on them. Man, I, I don't know why, but there's something in me that just, I, I love those signs. I have little sayings, scripture verses. So you'll see one that says, be still and know that I am God. You'll see one in, in another part of my house that says, you know, may you be blessed. All these different things. I, I love them. One thing that I noticed when we visited Lake Homes are all these Lake Home wood signs. Have you seen these things before? I think if I had a Lake Home, my house would just be filled with these wood signs. Becca's on me already about the wood signs. She's like, enough sayings and slogans around our house, Brian. Can we just get a picture of like a nice scenery? This is ridiculous. But I would fill up my lake house full of these wood signs. Maybe you've seen these things before. You've seen them. They say, the greatest memories are made at the lake. That can be true, right? Maybe some of your greatest memories are made at the lake. Or how about this one? Relax. You're at the lake. That sign doesn't work well in other situations, right? Relax. You're at work. <laughs> Relax. You're at the dentist. You know, this just doesn't work. Like, lake makes it work. Or how about this one? Life is better at the lake. And it just is. It just feels better at the lake, doesn't it? Or this one, on lake time, which means, you know, you're not wearing a watch when you're at the lake. Or how about this one? Heaven is a little closer in a home by the lake. This is This is true. This is why I want to purchase a lake home, just so I can be closer to heaven. That's what I'm just trying to do. I'm just trying, that's all I'm trying to do, is to get closer to heaven. Or how about this one? If you're not barefoot, you're overdressed. And, or maybe, this is probably my favorite, you never know how many friends you have until you have a lake house, <laughs> right? I think actually a better way to phrase that would be this, you never know how many friends you have until you sell your lake house, because those that are still around, those are your friends. <laughs> those who are no longer anywhere to be seen or heard from, they were just about your lake house, right? I love those signs, these, these, this, these, these lake signs. I love being around the lake. I think it's because Jesus was around the lake and we're just trying to be like Jesus, right? That's why we like <laughs> the lake. Jesus was around the lake so we want to be around the lake as well. And Jesus spent much of his ministry around the lake. And so this summer, what we want to do is just look at those lessons he taught us around the lake. The lake that Jesus was around, as you read the Gospels, it was first called uh, the, the lake of uh, Serenathus. Oh, I'm sorry, I said that completely wrong. Let me look at my notes. It's the Sea of Chenereth. Then it was later called the Lake of Gennesaret, and now it's called the Sea of Galilee. This is a sea in Israel. It's 13 miles from north to south. It's seven miles from the east to the west. And so it's a pear-shaped lake. This is where Jesus did a lot of his ministry. At its biggest depth, it's about 157 feet it's in the winter time, it averages about 57 degrees. In the summer, about 88 degrees. So it's really good weather all year round. It really is a temperate weather, except sometimes there can be strong winds and strong rain. Maybe you see stories like this when Jesus is walking on the water or when he calms the storm. This is the lake that Jesus teaches around. It's around this lake that Jesus calls many of his disciples because they were fishermen. It's around this lake where Jesus performed the miraculous catch of fish. This is the lake that Jesus walked on water. It's the lake that he calmed the storm in. It's the lake where he crossed and then he delivered the demon-possessed man. This is the lake where Jesus met Peter after his resurrection and reinstated him. So much happened around this lake. And so for these 10 weeks, we want to look at all the different ministry that took place where Jesus was either next to or on 
the lake, and we want to ask ourselves, what can we learn around the lake this summer? So, Kensington Church, welcome to the lake. Whether you have a lake home or not, welcome to the lake. And here's my challenge to you over these next 10 weeks. I want to challenge you to attend every single week. Now listen, you might say, how is that going to be possible? I have vacations. I have these things. I'm going to the lake. That's okay. We have this thing called online where you can be in your, you might be in your cabin right now. So whether you're at the cabin or in a campus, I want to challenge you to attend each week, to glean these lessons from the lake. Let's learn what Jesus has to say to us as a church. So welcome to the lake. Let me pause here, and we're going to receive our offering in all of our campuses right now. Again, just a huge thank you to all of you who partner with us to see ministry happen here locally and around the globe. Uh, As we give, we give to the Lord. We give to the Lord's church, and uh, we do our very best to steward what you give Uh, to bring the kingdom of God, to meet the needs of people around us. And so let me pray, and then our ushers receive the offering. Lord, we're so thankful that we get the chance to bring a gift to you. And Lord, we pray that this would be worship. And Lord, we pray that many people would be blessed through our generosity and giving uh, today. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So the sermon today, uh, what I'm calling the sermon, it's, it's a question, and this is the title of my sermon. It's, did you get my message? Did you get my message? Have you ever had somebody ask you that question? Hey, did you get my message? And then you tell them, oh, it must have got lost in my junk mail or something like that, which, by the way, is an excuse. It never gets lost in the junk mail. Like, you can find that message. Or maybe you say, oh, I think my kids must have deleted your text message. Have you ever used that excuse before? No, I didn't hear your voicemail. Did you get my message? And this is the question for today. Did you get my message? I remember at one point I was flying out of LaGuardia, which is in New York, and I had my friend bring me to LaGuardia. And this was when I was younger. I didn't really keep up to date with my itineraries, and so I was just like, yeah, I'm flying out of LaGuardia. Here's the time. Can you bring me? My friend was kind enough to bring me. Going from Connecticut into LaGuardia can be a chore. It's about an hour and 15-minute drive, hour and 30 minutes or four hours, depending on the traffic. It's one of the two. It's either one. It's a toss-up. And so he was kind to bring me. We get there. I hadn't checked my itinerary, and all of a sudden, a text message popped up about my flight. And it said, ah, your flight has been delayed. Ah, this is bad news, right? But here's the worst news, is that I realized on the text message, it said, your flight from Kennedy has been delayed. Now, if you don't know New York City, there are two Airports. One is LaGuardia and one is Kennedy. And it, on, on the map, they're not that far away. But again, it could take 30 minutes to, to four hours to get there. I missed the message. I missed the message. I think I missed my flight. And I know that I lost a friend. That's what happened. <laughs> I wonder, have you gotten the message? Have you gotten my message You know, Jesus has a a clear message for us. I love the fact that Jesus, he's he's very clear. Now, sometimes when people say, did you get my message, you didn't get it because they're not clear. Some people just aren't clear. Other people are very clear. Beck and I were just in the mall recently, and I was shopping for some shoes. I love shoes. I was shopping for some shoes, and there's about a two- or three-year-old in there with his parents, And this little guy was pulling down all the shoe boxes, just pulling down. It was like a rainstorm of shoe boxes. Shoe boxes were hitting the young and the old in the store. And I couldn't believe what was happening. And the parents kind of looked at him and was like, hey, buddy, maybe you don't want to do that, right? I'm like, well, if you say to a two or three year old, maybe you don't want to do that, he's going to go, ah, that leaves room for me to do this. So he starts tearing down more and more shoes. Now, that message from that parent was very unclear. If I was a young boy and my parents were there with me and I was pulling down all those shoe boxes, I I won't say what was said, but I'll tell you this. 
it would have been a very clear message. <laughs> don't, no, 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 Brian. We're not pulling down shoes and hitting people with these things. There's gonna be some repercussions if that's gonna happen. It was very clear. I'm thankful that the messages that we have from Jesus, they're very clear. In fact, today, I wanna share the clear message of Jesus. Maybe you've not heard this before, but I just wanna give you the clear message of Jesus. What does he say to us? What is he calling us to? And where I wanna bring us today is in Matthew's Gospel, chapter four, verses 12 through 13, and then also verses 17 to 20. And so I wanna read that for you right now. This is a message that Jesus gives right next to the lake. It says this, when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He went first to Nazareth, then left there and moved to Capernaum beside the Sea of Galilee in the region of Zebulun and Nephtali. From then on, Jesus began to preach. And this is what Jesus said. Repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. In verse 18, one day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, and Jesus says this, come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading and to the hearing of his word. Jesus gives us a clear message. So what is the message of Jesus? I wanna give it to you from this passage. What does Jesus tell us? What is his message to us? I wanna give it to you in two words. Here's the message of Jesus. Turn and follow. Let me talk about each of those. Turn and follow. The first part of his message is turn. Jesus says this to, to all who are listening. This is after Jesus was brought into the wilderness. He was tempted by the evil one. He overcomes that, and then he comes out of the wilderness, empowered by the Spirit of God, and he begins to preach this message. And he says, repent from your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. And so the first part of Jesus' call to us is to turn, turn. And it comes in two parts, turn from and turn to. Repentance starts with turning from. Now this word repent is a very churchy word, isn't it? Repent. I think sometimes we even say that word repent and, and it might cause you a, a little uh, annoyance. Maybe, maybe you don't like that word. Maybe it's, it's probably misunderstood by most of us. So I wanna talk a little bit about this. What is Jesus saying to us when he says repent? Because this word repent was actually a very normal word. It was used frequently. People would have understood exactly what it meant. It's this word metanoal. And it means to have a change of mind. And what Jesus is saying is, listen, I, I want you to have a change of mind about the sin in your life. I, I, I want you to choose something different. I want you to turn. Let me put it this way. When, when Beck and I came to Michigan, one of the things that I did was, and probably both of us really, wherever we went, we put our GPS on because we had no idea how to get anywhere. And everybody told us about all these mile roads and you kept saying, oh, it's at nine mile and eight mile and 23 mile and all this stuff. That meant nothing to us, by the way. It was just like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And so we would use our GPS every single place we went. I had to use my GPS to get to work Okay, I didn't know how to get anywhere. And then months into us being here in Michigan, I decided I'm gonna turn the GPS off. I think I have an understanding now of how to get places, and this is gonna be a part of my, my training. And there were moments when I had the GPS off that I'd be driving, and then all of a sudden it would dawn on me, I'm going the wrong way. I am going the wrong way right now. Now, there are two things that I could do. One is I could just say, well, I'm going this way. Let's see where the Lord leads me. I'm just gonna keep going this way even though I know it's not right. I'm gonna be stubborn because I chose to go this way, therefore this must be the right way. Or I could say, I'm gonna get off at the next exit and I'm gonna turn around so I can go in the right direction. That's what repentance is. 
Repentance is, oh my goodness, I'm noticing, I, I'm going in the wrong direction. It's been pointed out to me that I'm going the wrong way. And I'm not going to stick my heels in and just continue to go the wrong way. No, I'm going to take the next exit and I'm going to go in the right direction. It's a change of mind. This, this change of thought. Wow, I've discovered that what I'm entering into here, what I'm doing, how I'm behaving is not the right way. And so I'm not just going to keep going after that. No, I'm going to turn and I'm going to go in the other direction, the right direction. This is what repentance is. Now, we can apply this changing of mind to the sin in our life, to anything that keeps us from, from God, anything that separates us from the Lord. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to... I'm gonna repent, I'm gonna change my mind on bitterness. I'm gonna change my mind on gossip. I'm no longer gonna, gonna talk badly about other people. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my mind, and not only am I I'm gonna just change my mind, I'm gonna change directions. I'm no longer gonna do it anymore. I'm not gonna gossip, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to encourage. I'm gonna change my mind on, on holding forgiveness from this person. I'm gonna go in a different direction. I'm gonna change my mind on what I'm putting into my body that's harming it, and I'm gonna go in a different direction. I'm gonna change my mind on, on where I'm spending all of my time, what I'm putting my eyes on. I'm gonna change my mind about it, and I'm gonna go in a different direction. And so in one way, we can repent by repenting from the sin in our life, those things that keep us from God and apart from God. But we can also repent and change our mind about the lies that have been sown into us. And this is important as well. You see, for many of us, we're walking around with these lies, these myths that we're not good enough, that we're not worthy, that we don't have a place in this world, that we don't have a purpose and we need to repent from those lies, too. You know where these lies come from? They come from the evil one. They don't come from Jesus. No, because God teaches us very clearly, no, you were created by God in his image. You have a great purpose. You have a great mission on this planet. You are loved by God. And so repentance is not just repenting from our sin, but it's repenting from the lies that have been sown into our life. No, I have great value because I've been created by my heavenly creator. I have a great purpose. Loved, I am cherished. And so Jesus' message to us is turn, turn. Change your mind on the sin in your life. Turn from it. Go in a different direction. Change your mind on the lies that have been sown into your life. Turn and go in a different direction. Turn from these things, but then also turn to something. And I love how Jesus says it so clearly. He says, repent of your sin and turn to God. Turn to God. God. See, repentance is not just about turning from. Probably more importantly, it's about what you turn to. You turn to your loving Father. We turn to God. We turn to a personal relationship with him. I think probably the best story in all of Scripture about who our God is comes in Luke chapter 15. It's about the prodigal son, which, by the way, is each and every one of us where the prodigal son decides that he's gonna disown his father, leaves his father, goes out on his own, turns his back on his father. He finds himself in a bad situation. He wants to come home. He prepares a speech, hoping to convince his father to let him back in. He doesn't even get the opportunity to give the speech. Because as he gets on to the driveway to his father's home, his father sees him. His father has compassion for him. His father runs to him. I love that. So wherever you are in your, in your walk of life right now, whatever sin you might be involved in, whatever it might be, whatever brokenness you might have, whatever hurt you might have, whatever anxiety you're carrying, God runs to you and meets you in that place. You don't have to get all cleaned up before you come to, he comes to you. This is what he does, and the father runs to the son embraces him, doesn't slap him in the face and say, how dare you, what have you done? No, he embraces him, 
And then he brings him back home, walks him back home. I love that walk of the father walking him back home. And then what does he do? He throws him a party. Let's celebrate. My son has returned. This is a picture of what you turn to when you turn your life to the Lord. No matter what you've done, no matter what you've said, no matter what you're involved in, when you turn to the Lord, he runs to you, he embraces you, he walks you home, and he throws a celebration in your honor. My son, my daughter has returned home. I believe repentance, changing your mind, repentance is one of the most favorable things you can do for yourself. I wonder, are you stuck in things right now that you know are wrong? I want to challenge you to turn from them. Turn to God. Experience the grace of God. Experience the the forgiveness of God. And that happens when you turn to him. Are, Are you hurt right now? Are you hurting? Turn to God. Experience his comforts. Experience his healing power. Are you held captive by a lie? Turn to the Lord. Allow him to speak his truth into your life. Are you broken? Are you tired? Are you afraid? Turn to the Lord. Experience his comfort. Experience his compassion in your life. The first part of Jesus' message that we learn at the lake is to turn. Turn. The second part of the message at the lake that we learn from Jesus is this is to follow. He says it very clearly. He says, come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. Let's walk through this. This is his message, follow me. Now, as I was looking at that, follow me, follow me, I began to look at it, I was like, wow, you know what? I think as a people, we're nailing this one. Like, I think we're hitting a home run on this one. Follow me, follow me. Let me apply it directly to my life. I was looking at this, wow, follow me. Actually, I think I'm doing amazing at this. Follow me. Follow me. Like, I'm really good at it, actually. Follow me. I'm really good at following my dreams. I'm really good at it. I'm really good at following my agenda. Follow me. Follow me. I'm really good at it. I'm really good at follow follow me. Follow my opinions. I'm really good at that. Follow my convictions. I'm really good at following. I'm really good at following me. I'm excellent at it. There's nobody better on the planet of following me than me. I'm really good at it. In fact, I'm pretty good sometimes at rolling over other people in order to follow me. Pretty good at that. That's not what Jesus is saying, is it? And this is, this is what we have to lay down because I actually I do think we're pretty good at following me. But we're called to follow him. Follow Jesus. Follow his lead. Follow His teaching, follow his ways. This is the call of Jesus. This is the clear message of Jesus. Turn to the Lord and then follow him. Your will be done, God, on earth as it is in heaven. Not my will. Follow Jesus. And then Jesus gives us these two amazing lessons. And and we see it in the lives of the disciples right after Jesus calls them, follow me. You see these two amazing lessons, really, that the disciples teach us. And it comes in verse 20. It says this. After Jesus called the disciples to follow them, it says this. They left their nets at once and followed him. Two lessons in here about following. And the first is this, is that Sometimes to follow Jesus, you have to lay things down. And and this is what you see with these disciples, this call, follow me. They didn't just take everything and and follow Jesus. No, they had to lay some things down. And, And to follow Jesus, we need to lay things down. We need to lay the bad things down. We need to lay the, the shame and the guilt that we've been holding on to. We need to lay down the sin in our lives. We, we need to, to lay those things down. We need to lay down our selfish motives. We need to lay down our immoral behavior. We need to lay down our bitterness. We need to lay down our anger. We need to lay down these, these things that we know are bad and say, Lord, we're going to follow you now and follow your ways. But also, sometimes Jesus calls us to lay down what is good. 
And that gets hard too. You know, what, what the disciples do here, it says this, and they left their nets to follow Jesus. The nets weren't bad. The nets were good. The nets were their livelihood. They were fishermen. They left something that was good in order to follow Jesus. And sometimes in our lives, the Lord will call us to leave something good in order to follow him into what is best. I think for Beck and I and our family, we've experienced that over this last year. We left something really, really good. We love our church family in Walnut Hill. In fact, two members of our church surprise us and they're here today, which is amazing. We love our church family. It's a good thing. But the Lord called us to lay it down in order to follow him into the next season of our life. It's a good thing, but this is what it means to follow, to follow him, to leave behind the, the bad stuff, but also be willing to leave behind the good stuff in order to go after the best. The other thing that we learn from the disciples about following here is this. It says this, they left their nets at once. And, and the thing about following that I think we get wrong often is that we delay. We, we toil over things. And I love here the disciples, they heard the call, follow me. And they laid down, they didn't say, ah, let's, let's weigh the, the pros and cons of this situation. How's it gonna benefit us? What are the snacks gonna be like on the road with Jesus? Like, what's gonna happen here? No, they didn't do any of that. They said, Jesus called us, we're laying down our nets, and at once they went. And I think in our culture, we've lost the at once mentality. Where when Jesus calls, when he convicts us, we respond at once, at once. We love going to, to Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, but one of the things, I'm sure you know this already, but even in August, the lake is pretty cold, pretty cold. It's actually shockingly cold all the time. That's what it is. And I don't like cold water, and so my kids, they, they make fun of me. Even at pools, like I'll kind of walk around it 80,000 times and tip, tip, dip my toe in. But my kids, they'll, they won't even test the water, and they'll just dive right in. They see it, and they dive right in. I wish I had that mentality. This is what Jesus is calling us to. Not to tiptoe around it. Oh, Jesus called me to something, to step into something, to be a part of what he's doing, to go and share my faith with somebody. Not to kind of tiptoe around and be like, ah, I don't know, what's it gonna mean for me? How are people gonna receive me? Ah, that's kind of stuff. Oh, the Lord's calling me to give this up so that I can follow him in a more deep relationship. Ah, I don't know, I don't know. No, he's calling us to listen and dive in. Dive in, trusting that what he's calling us to is what is best for us. There's this great hymn called Come Ye Sinners. We don't write songs like this anymore, by the way, <laughs> with a title, Come Ye Sinners. Uh, too many people would be offended by that title today, I think, right? Come Ye Sinners, ah, I'm not listening to that. But, but this hymn is a well-known hymn, and there's a verse in it that I love, and it says this, Come ye weary and heavy laden, lost and ruined by the fall. Now catch this, and if you tarry, that just means if you pause, if you wait, if you tarry until you're better, you will never come at all. If you just wait, if you just pause, you know what, you'll probably never come at all. Instead, let's be a church, let's be a people that when the Lord calls, we jump in and we say yes right away. And then, Jesus gives this promise to this. Follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. It's kind of an interesting phrase, isn't it? But remember, he's talking to fishermen. He's talking to people who even if it wasn't their profession, it was a part of their lives. They're around the lake and he's saying, listen, this is what I, this is what I wanna do. As you follow me, I'm gonna teach you some things. And this is what happens in our walk with Jesus. As we follow him, he teaches us things. And what he wants to teach us is this, is that he actually has a great purpose on your life. He has something that's critically important for each and every one of us that he wants to show us. And he wants to show us how to fish. Not for fish, but for people. What does that mean? He wants to show us how to reflect his love, his mercy, his grace, his presence, and his power so that other people are attracted to him. If a fisherman is out there trying to attract fish 
What Jesus is doing is trying to teach us the ways that will attract people to himself. That other people will know the love of God. That other people will know the forgiveness of God. That other people will know the restoration that comes from knowing Jesus. That other people would know his presence. This is what he wants to do in and through us. He doesn't want to just put you in the waiting room of his kingdom. He wants to put you on the playing field. Say, go out there, get out there, and draw people to Jesus. Now, let me just close by saying this. His clear message is to turn and follow. And as I was reflecting on these two words, it just hit me, we need both of them. We need both of them. We need to turn and we need to follow. Listen, if I turn but I don't follow, I'm disobedient. I could turn and say, yes, I believe in you, Jesus. But if I don't follow his teaching, his ways, what the Spirit's calling me to, then I'm disobedient. Maybe I've turned, but I'm disobedient. And if I follow, but I don't turn to him, then I'm disconnected. And maybe that's you, where you know what to do. You've read in his word, you've been taught, I know how to treat people, I know how to behave like Jesus. I know what that looks like, but you've lost connection with Jesus. You haven't turned to him. You're not daily turning to him, face to face with him. We need both. This is the clear message of Jesus. Turn, turn to him each and every day and follow. I wanna challenge each of you in in all of our campuses today to turn to Jesus, turn to Jesus. And I I wanna ask you in this moment, if, if you knew Jesus was standing right in front of you, If you knew he was just standing right, right in front of you, what would you say to him? What what would you say to him in in light of his message to you? Turn and follow. What would you say? For some of you, you might say, you know what, Jesus, man, I've I've never turned my life to you. And today I want to, I don't want to wait. I want to at once, I want to. I want to turn my life to you, Jesus. I want to experience this grace and this mercy and this this love. I want to know your presence in my life. I want to be forgiven. Or or maybe for some of you, you're saying, you know what, I've, I've, I've turned Jesus, but what I want to say to you is I just want to confess I haven't been following you. I I, I say all the right words. Yes, I believe in Jesus. I've given my life to him. I've surrendered my life. Yes, I've accepted Jesus. All the words. I know all the words but you, you're calling me to things, Jesus, and I'm not following. Or, or maybe today you're, you're following, you're, you're doing the right things, but if you're honest, you don't have that personal relationship with him, that, that connection with him. And so I just wanna challenge us at the very beginning of this series to turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. In just a moment, I'm gonna pray and and lead us through that time, and and I I want you to honestly reflect on your own life, your own position, your own coordinates on the map right now, and be honest with the Lord, and come and and, and change your mind on some things, and turn to him. I believe there are some people listening to the message right now, whether you're at the lake house, (laughs) or you're in one of our campuses, who you've never turned your life to Jesus. You've never really said to Jesus one-on-one, Jesus, I want to give my life to you and I want to follow you the rest of my life. And and I I don't want you to delay anymore. I want to give you that opportunity, that invitation to do that right now. And so let's pause in all of our campuses. Let's bow our heads and and, and let's pray together. Lord, we thank you that, that you've come we thank you that you, you teach us these amazing lessons. We thank you that you're in our presence, that out of your love you came. We thank you that you cherish us, that you've given us purpose, that you love us. And right now, Lord, there are, there are some folks listening to this message who they've never given their life to you. They've never turned for the first time. And so, friends, if that's you, you know, there's not a, special equation or anything like that. It's simply turning to your heart and and saying these words, whether you say it in your heart or out loud, then they can be words of your choice, but they sound something like this. 
Jesus, I want to turn from my old life to a new life in you. I'm sorry for walking away from you. I'm sorry for the things in my life that have kept me from you. Would you forgive me? And Jesus, I want to start a personal relationship with you right now. And friends, I believe if you prayed something like that, like the angels rejoice, you are forgiven, you are set free, you are beginning a new relationship with Jesus now. Others of you in the room, at home, just listening to this, others of you, you've turned to Jesus, you've made that decision, I believe in Jesus, but you're not following him right now. Like if if we were to join you for a week of your life, we wouldn't see you really following Jesus. And now would be a great moment at once (laughs) to say, you know what, Jesus, I'm sorry that I've not been following you. And I do believe in you and therefore I'm gonna follow you. And there's some specific things I believe in many of your lives that you've been avoiding that the Lord wants you to listen to and, and follow him in and trust him in. And right now, I just, I ask that you would say yes to those things to the Lord. And finally, some of you have been following. You, you know what to do. You know the practices. You, you know all those things. Maybe you're even opening the word of God and, and reading it and studying it. Maybe you're attending church. You've got like a great attendance track record. But if you're honest, you're disconnected. And right now is a moment just to say, you know what, Lord, help me turn back to you face to face. I've got all the equations, I've got all the things right, but I've lost that connection with you. So Lord, for all my friends, I pray that you would meet us. We thank you that you call us to follow you, to turn to you. And we pray, Lord, that this summer we'd learn many things about you, about who we are, And so, Lord, we just pray, um, we pray that you'd strengthen us as a church and that you'd draw many people who are far from you into your family. We pray this all in the powerful name of Jesus and all God's people in all of our campuses as I send it back say, amen, amen. Well, friends, here in our Troy campus, Let's all stand together as we sing this last song together. There's a God in human form. Walk with us, dwell with us. Spirit of God, author of life, breathe. Bye.
Thank you, everyone, for joining us today for this first series of Lessons on the Lake. And I want to echo Brian's challenge and say, yeah, we've got a fun 10 weeks in store for you for this series. So I encourage you to come back every week. If you can't come, uh, tune in online. We've got a lot of fun stuff planned. So next week, Brian Mowry will be here in person. So make sure you come back and uh, for that. It'll be, we've got a great one next week. So I want you to be a part of that. So enjoy your week. Be blessed. Have a good one, everyone.